Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we are playing around with the Neon Sign Transformer, and this video will get a little bit dangerous. Alright, so we start off simply with the Variac. The Variac video is there. Um, <laughs> this is the Neon Sign Transformer. This isn't the real video for it, since I still have to do a little bit more research just to double check all of the knowledge which I've accumulated from playing around with it. Um, but this is just kind of playing around with it, seeing some cool effects, different stuff like that. So we're going to get to this. First things first, safety. What's the solution? I got a fire extinguisher right here, just in case things go bad, because I have no idea what's going to happen with this, because I've only done this once before. Alright, so I have the Neon Sign Transformer. The This is um, wire that has insulation rated to 16,000 volts. So, it will not shock me if I touch the wire, which it will shock you if you use regular wire. Just a heads up. I also have the sun need of a long wooden stick, so it should not shock me whatsoever. No guarantees. Okay, power bar on. I always like to power bar my Variac just so I have a nice switch. And we're going to start drawing. Oh. I'm just turn up the voltage slowly. 75%. That's about a good 100%. I just have the one end of it hooked up to the secondary so I have a nice big striking surface. Now if we... There we go. Lit some isopropyl rubbing alcohol. You can see when I get close. It starts to blow it away. Before it connects. My understanding is that this is called ionic wind because it's ionizing the air, trying to connect, and this causes wonderful wind, which makes the fire blow away. Once it's on fire though, it doesn't seem to affect it that much, it's just before it connects. Uh, and we're out of rubbing alcohol. I just wanted to get a little bit more up close and personal with the spark. The arc, yeah, whatever. So you see this is low voltage, about 25 volts in. It's kind of small, loud, erratic sparks. Turning it up, that's about 50 volts in. Turn it up. One second, let me just get this off of here. So that's about 55 ish. 75. And you can hear it when I start to get it close. There we go. Turning it up to 100 volts. There's this weird effect of always wanting to creep towards the center of the toroid. I'm going to turn up to the full 120 volt input, which is 12,000 volt output. You can see it's actually like a flame. Now if I turn it up to 125, you get really nice actual flame. So, some people have asked, is the flame actually hot? Well, here's your complete and utter solution. That is a sheet of paper lying on top of one of the... Oh. Connect. The correct answer is so hot that the paper will not catch fire, because the paper adjacent to the paper that is hot has already turned to charcoal. It's also changing the color of the arc. It's pretty cool. There we go. correct answer is yes, it is very hot. This is, I believe, 600 degree um, insulation, and when I put it under the arc, it bursts into flames instantaneously. So... Yep, 
Yes, the flame is hot and it is beautiful, and I recommend you play with it safely or just don't play with it at all because honestly, it's not too much of a kick after doing the same thing over and over and over again. At least you can make a Tesla coil playing music.